I think the resurrection, as you say, is hugely important for Christians, and that's a miracle. And uh, again, uh, David Hume said that in ancient times and in the past, people would believe the miracles because they didn't have a good understanding. They didn't understand natural laws, mm -hmm. which is, uh, I'm not sure if you agree with that. But he also said that miracles are a violation of natural law. So what is your take on that? And also, why, why do, what evidence is there for the miracles and the resurrection? Well, my ancestry is Scottish. So far from me to criticize a Scotsman like David Hume, but he was wrong. And uh, I say that not because I'm a Hume expert, but the most famous Hume expert that I ever met was Anthony Flew, a philosopher, who all his life championed atheism like Richard Dawkins did until he came to see that the cell and human DNA was a code, and it spoke of intelligence. And I had an interview with him uh, not long before he died, and I asked him, I said, what about David Hume and miracles? He said, I was wrong. And he made one of the most humble statements I've ever heard from an academic. He said, my books were wrong. I'd have to rewrite them, and I'm never going to have the chance. But let's come to the substance of it. That's just a little story. Miracles, violations of the laws of nature. That's where the confusion lies. Law has two meanings for most of us. They're the laws of nature. What are they? They are our descriptions, often in mathematics, of what normally happens. The apple dropped falls towards the center of the earth, as Newton pointed out. The planets revolve around the sun in elliptical axes. But then there are laws that say you must not drive in inner London without paying a congestion charge. And if you don't pay it, you're going to get clobbered. That's a different kind of law. They get totally confused. Now, Lewis, as usual, in his wonderful genius, he went right to the heart of this in a most brilliant book which most people don't read because they get stuck in the third or fourth chapter, which is quite difficult. They should leave it out and go to the next chapter. But Lewis tells this illustration. Here I am, I stay in London overnight, and I put 50 pounds in the drawer, night one. Night two, I put another 50 in, so that's 100 pounds. Uh, I'm leaving on day three, I get up in the morning, and I find a 10 pound note in the drawer. So what do I conclude? That the laws of arithmetic have been broken or the laws of England? <laughs> well, you're laughing because you see, I conclude the laws of England have been broken. How do I know that? Because the laws of arithmetic have not been broken. Do you see? It's the fact that the laws of arithmetic hold that tell me that somebody's put their hand in to what I thought was a closed system of cause and effect, but it turned out not to be, so a thief could put their hand in. So that has helped me enormously because it, it, it really knocks Hume right out of the ballpark. It shows that the confusion lies in the nature of, of our concept of law. The laws of nature are not like the laws of England. Now, here's the slightly ironic thing. In order to recognize a miracle, and the word miracle is slightly unfortunate because it's Latin, miraculum is a wonder. What we're talking about is supernatural events that give evidence that there is a supernature. Not everything that claims to be a miracle is one. If I say it's a miracle that Jim passed his exam, that isn't necessarily supernatural. It's because he was a silly nitwit and didn't do any work, you see. So, we need to focus, and that's why I focus on the resurrection. This is the central claim that Jesus rose. It's supernatural. It's not simply that Jesus rose as if it came from inside the grave. It's God raised him from the dead. It's power coming in from outside. Now, take a simple analogy. If I pick this up and drop it, the law of gravitation will tell me it falls towards the center of the earth. That will not stop Samuel catching it. He can intervene and stop it. 
and it doesn't break the law of gravity. It changes the configuration of the situation. So, at the larger level, God created a universe with regularities in it. If he hadn't done it that way, you wouldn't have been able to recognize a miracle if you saw one. If we didn't know the dead bodies normally remain dead, we wouldn't be the least bit surprised by resurrection. And the interesting thing is, it answers another thing of Hume's. Hume said, and you put it uh, in your introduction to the question, that in those days, people didn't know the laws of nature, didn't they? When Joseph was told by his fiancée that she was pregnant, he didn't know where babies came from, did he? So he believed her. No, he didn't, because he knew exactly where they came from. And we read that because he was a righteous man, he wanted to divorce her quietly. He didn't want to expose her to public, because he knew exactly what the law of nature was. And it took a special intervention of God speaking to that man and saying, Joseph, this is okay. This is holy. I'm behind this. The man born blind in John 9, it's a wonderful story. It's actually a humorous story. They said to him, well, you weren't the man who was blind or you weren't born blind, all this. And he said, look, let's cut all this out. Since the beginning of the world, it's never been heard that someone born blind has received their sight. So what has happened to me is unique. It must be supernatural. Of course they knew the laws of nature. And, and therefore, Hume was wrong on both those counts.